you're very welcome back. Now, what do you do if you think your child might have dyslexia? How would you know for sure? Well, with, for people without dyslexia, it's still a bit of a mystery. We are joined now by dyslexia specialist and author Sasha Rus, and we also have teacher and illustrator Daniel Sheehy. Good to have you on the show, guys. Welcome, guys. Yeah, thank you. Very straightforward question. I'd imagine there's a complex answer. What is dyslexia? Well, I would say it's a learning difference rather than a disability. It's not a condition, it's not a diagnosis. It's just a, a different way of thinking and processing and, and seeing the world, okay. basically. We, let's get straight into what you might see if you are living with dyslexia as opposed to a, somebody that does not yeah. have dyslexia. I mean, Danielle, you, mm -hmm. what age were you when you realised or when your parents found out you had this way of learning, a different way of learning than the rest of us? Um, when I was in primary school, I think I noticed that st other students didn't have a problem with, say, their spellings. And I remember one day I was sitting beside a girl and she would get 10 out of 10 in all her spellings. And I was looking at her going, how do you do it? How do you, how do you get 10 mm -hmm. out of 10? Because I'd get like two or three and I would spend a lot of time. And she said, yeah, I read over them. And I was like, yeah, no, that's not what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I would never get the right. So that was it. But... Like, I didn't actually get an assessment until I was in university at my post-grad level. So I'd got all the way through school. How did you do that? That must have been very difficult for you to go through I school. I think it probably was. I think it probably took more effort and stress than was necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, it should have been easier, but, you know, mm -hmm. I did get through it. Were you, were you trying to hide things all the time? I did, especially with spelling. Spellings mm -hmm. really was a problem. Um, my 10 spellings a week were, were a problem and I'd try and sort of find little sneaky ways around it mm -hmm. and that that was actually a huge stress on me because um, I But it's that you building your own defensive system against that's the it. system in one sense. Absolutely and it's against the system it's not anything uh, personal to either the teachers or the teachers or the person or, it's not 10 personal. 10 either. <laughs> exactly and she was doing fantastic work you know and you know that's great okay. But yeah. it doesn't suit everybody. That system doesn't suit everybody. Mm -hmm. What is the percentage of children that would have this have learning dyslexia? difference? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, the British Dyslexia Association say 10% and 4% severely. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. a fair amount of the population. Right. It's going to be at least two per class. That's a lot, really. It is okay, a lot. We're going to show, Sasha, you might explain this on screen, what uh, somebody with dyslexia might see as opposed to what we might read in a sentence. For example, can, do we have them there, James? Okay, so basically if, 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 if I read something, I might read, take a shower. Somebody with dyslexia will read, go and shake a tower. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, that can happen, yes. But so I, is it a jumbling of the word or what not, is it? No, um, actually, yes, reading and spelling can be a difficulty, but really the main issue with dyslexia is the short-term memory. Mm -hmm. So it's the forgetfulness. Okay, but this is from your book, I think, yes, actually. We yes. took these from so, so, so you've, you've read something very simple. You're very, very familiar with the words, but because of your memory, your short term memory isn't great, you forget yes, how to put them together exactly, again. Exactly, the, the look of the word or the phonetics, um, that can be difficult to learn and remember and in the early stages. So then they would confuse. Mm -hmm. Right, so, it's confu so, so is it a, uh, I mean, I understand the short term memory type thing, but if I read pack of lies, and then lack of pies, that's kind of in backwards or... Mm. Mom, does that make sense to you, Daniel? It, yes. And I think this is actually from one of my illustrations. Okay. Um, in the book, of course, you were an artist, so you did all the <laughs> I illustrations did, I did all the, the drawings yeah. uh, based on the text that Sasha would give me. And we actually had a great time when we started looking at this sort of jumbled up... Um, text we sort of printed them all out and sort of passed them around the table and had a good laugh at them all and it is it there sometimes you do pick up one letter uh, or a letter from a, a line below and it just sort mm -hmm. of it creeps appears. up yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and that's why it's so hard for um dyslexic students to read out in class okay. because that becomes it's fine when you're just left to yourself to read quietly by yourself, you mm -hmm. can you can follow it. Yeah. You can read and along. You're not, saying, but you're not embarrassing yourself in mm. one sense in front of people yeah. as it's, well. It's hell to read out in public. Yeah. I still won't do it. Yeah, I had yeah. a friend. One of my friends was like that. And he used to always say that that things would jump from different lines. Yeah. Actually, when you're looking at it, even in a book, when he was reading himself, sometimes he had to concentrate. Yeah. Mm. And if I have to read something properly. Like when I was studying for my H dip, yeah. I read with a line underneath and a line so on top. So it didn't jump up. So it yeah. wasn't That's moving interesting. around. That's interesting. Yeah. So mm. things move around. And and what is the method of teaching then that solves this? Or 
being multi-sensory, okay. so um, being visual, auditory, kinesthetic, tactile, sort of making and doing as a way of getting things from the short-term memory into long-term memory. So mm -hmm. you can train your mind? Well, yeah, well, there's a lot of work just trying out different creative strategies, mm -hmm. kind of using the creative side of their, their brain to help with the weaknesses, basically. Mm -hmm. Are there okay. different levels of dyslexia? In that, well, severe to mild. Yeah. And yes. yes. And yeah. where were you... Yeah. I Mild, don't. I'd say. No, I'm very dyslexic. Really? Oh. <laughs> but it's amazing that you can get through the system, which is almost like built against you. I don't mean yeah, that in a bad way. I mean, you getting on to do a HDF and going to college and you know becoming well, an artist. Well, I did go to art school, and mm. art school is different. Well, the creative so side, then. Mm. Of course, well, it's yeah. an advantage because, like, I went to um, I went to the Glasgow School of Art, and I did illustration and graphics. So we'd get a brief at the beginning of the week, and it would be like, come up with ten ideas to. Uh, advertise, say, whatever product it is, and I would come up with ten ideas, like you know, so fast, mm -hmm. and there mm -hmm. would be no problem. Come Wednesday, ten ideas, here we go. And uh, but the people say who maybe would be fantastic at spelling and would have beautiful presentation and turn up to meetings on time. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They would really struggle with that part. Yeah. So that's where my forte is, and a lot of dyslexics have that real strength, mm -hmm. where you can actually, you can see around ideas. Mm -hmm. so a lot well, of, as opposed to seeing black like, and white. Think of someone like Richard Branson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, you know, or Tom Cruise. I mean, these people who are at the top of their game, in oh, fairness. Every single field has yeah. a dyslexic at the top. I mean, there's something, that, it's no coincidence that both Bill Gates and Steve Jobs are dyslexic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they have a different way they're of creating the power. Different oh, yeah. 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 They're more right-brained than other, the rest of us. So, they have ways around things and, and being creative and mm. problem In a positive solving. way, though, as opposed to oh, yeah. try to hide something. Yeah. No, Daniel. yeah, definitely not to well, hide it. Yeah, I suppose that's where mm. they get the... That's where the problems are, is in the education system and... The black and white system. That's the points. The if you hit these points, you're going to college. If you don't, yeah. you don't. And life yeah. isn't like that anyway. Mm. And when they get out of that, maybe into a third-level um, environment where they're... Doing or even they're... into the real world, or even into the to, to the working into world, mm -hmm. into business. business. Absolutely. Sasha, your book, At Home with Dyslexia, you go through this, and um, you even talk about how uh, parents can help their children with homework oh, and yeah. working on memory skills. Mm. So, so you've got to approach someone with dyslexia if you have a child with dyslexia. You can't just sit down with them like you would with another child who doesn't have dyslexia. Mm. There has to be ways of working through their homework with them tips and all that. Yes, definitely. So certainly in the early stages, but also encouraging them to be self-reliant as well, mm. so you're not with them all the time. Mm. But to just give them the, the skills to be organised, to deal with their short-term memory, really, and to deal with the struggles with rote learning, because that's a big problem for them. Yeah. They, they can't do rote learning. Yeah. Yeah. So it's giving them the, the equipment and the support, and uh, liaising with school, you know, being an advocate and, and communicating mm -hmm. with school about how long homework's taking and things like that is a is but a. The, te the teachers role. have to know how to deal with the situation as well. They I'd do. imagine that, that's a big they stress do. for moms and dads, for mm. the pupils and for the teachers themselves. Yeah, exactly. There needs to be more training and awareness, mm. really. You know, and what about teachers specifically it. trained in this area, though? Are there many? I, there's not enough. Yeah. There's mm. not enough. Considering the percentage that have dyslexia, you know, we're it's not really... It's huge. We're not mm. teaching them the way that suits them. Mm -hmm. So mm. they're kind of falling behind when actually they are above average, above average or average intelligence. Mm. So yeah, above average often. Yeah, so they're we're failing them. in a different it's sphere, different I suppose, yeah. really. And, and Daniel, with, just before so, we go, actually, sorry, yeah. we have to go. Uh, you have an exhibition on. Yes, oh, I, I do, do actually. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. It's um, at 46... Uh, Grand Parade. Grand Parade. <laughs> Thank you. Grand Parade. The CIT just, just Gallery. Just around the corner. It's just yeah, around the corner. Yeah, we, so uh, okay. we just hung that and it's open for this week, which is Dyslexia Awareness Week. Yes. Please. And just leave it with this, oh, actually, yeah. this, this, this drawing. Go back to that, James, for you, the mm. last one there for a second. Is this you against the system? The last drawing here we had. Is that the this last one? one? Yeah. <laughs> School stresses. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's yeah. Being an advocate, basically, and having the power with the with the label mm -hmm. dyslexia, that then they can fight for their rights. You have to equip support. yourself, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Armor. Mm -hmm. totally. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. totally. Okay, at home with dyslexia, mm -hmm. uh, Sasha Roos, a, a parent's guide to supporting your child, chapter by chapter, and lovely illustrations from Danielle there. Thanks so much. Thank you very Thank much, you. guys. Thank you.